of Professor Stephen Piper's lab. This is the Applied Electromagnetics Lab led by Professor Daniel Stephen Piper. The research focuses on novel structures for controlling the interaction between electromagnetic waves and matter, ranging from radio to optical frequencies. Recent work has focused on periodic structures and metasurfaces for wave guiding, absorbing, and bandwidth enhancements, including photonic topological insulators and nonlinear and active circuit enabled designs. The projects in this lab encompass the full range beginning with theory and simulations and concluding with experimental demonstration. Experimental work is carried out in this lab space in Jacobs Hall and is well equipped for measurements ranging from DC to optical frequencies. The lab has a wide range of high-end VNAs, spectrum analyzers, power amplifiers, signal generators, and all other test equipment required so that most all measurements can be done in-house. The lab also has a vibrationally stabled optical table with the vacuum chamber for our visible and near-infrared experiments. With a suite of laser sources, detectors, and related equipment on hand for many of the microwave metasurface designs. The custom 2D scanner is employed to probe the electric fields in the near field, verifying simulations. The lab also has the capability to generate very high powered signals for absorption studies of nonlinear devices. To measure antenna patterns or for electromagnetically sensitive experiments, the lab has a fully automated and echoic chamber. It also serves as an acoustically quiet chamber, which has been used for phononic and audio frequency experiments requiring an extra silent environment. The lab is broadly interested in wave phenomena, including propagation in acoustical metamaterials plasma, fluids, and spin waves, in addition to broad spectrum electromagnetics. For more information, please visit ece.ucsd.edu. Cool, so I hope you all enjoyed that uh, virtual tour of Professor Stephen Piper's lab. I'm going to hand it over to Robert so that uh, they can introduce themselves and you all can ask questions that um, they will be able to answer. All right, thanks for doing the video. Uh, so as, as mentioned, I'm, uh, I'm Robert. I'm a third year PhD student in Professor Stephen Piper's group. Um, I, uh, I guess a little bit of background, I did my undergrad in uh, CU Boulder in electrical engineering and then I joined here. I, I did uh, kind of a bunch of random stuff before I did electromagnetics, but that was always something I liked. In the lab, I primarily work on uh, what are called photonic topological insulators. Uh, that's just a big long series of words that uh, equates to a bunch of interestingly shaped metal patches on dielectric. Uh, so they're just little shapes that uh, exploit certain features of uh, the mathematics of topology uh, to get kind of interesting effects. Uh, so a lot of um, group mem uh, members uh, work on similar kinds of concepts where we take a lot of advanced things from physics, particularly condensed matter physics. Uh, we try to use those and translate them into something we can use in a electromagnetic or photonics kind of way. Um, we also do lots of uh, projects and have in the past for nonlinear uh, based devices, as mentioned in the video, so things involving uh, adding circuit elements into otherwise passive devices to do things like breaking limits, fundamental uh, you know, theorem-based ones that we can crush if we add some nonlinearity to it, things like that. Um, so we have people working in all sorts of uh, different facets of all those types, usually something to do with periodic structures, metasurfaces, metamaterials, things like that. Um, and as mentioned in the video, we, we do lots. So there's one person working on phenomics, which is from the mechanical engineering department. So we, we kind of work on anything that behaves in some way like a wave. <laughs> so um, 
pretty much anything to that to that order. But um, Professor Sim Piper can't be here, but I uh, I've been here long enough to know most things. So uh, if you have any questions for me or about the lab space or about the research we do, um, feel free to I guess type in the chat and. Uh, and I can also uh, send my email address to, in case anybody has something after, um, I can type that in. But, uh, yeah. Hi, Robert, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so do you guys fabricate all of your uh, topological structures on campus? Uh, depends on the type. So for uh, a lot of the ones we do in microwave, those ones are real simple uh, metal on dielectric. So those ones we just get uh, fabricated from some you know, commercial company um, since those are quick turnaround. But for some of the optical ones that we've done, uh, those ones we tend to do here uh, at the Nano3 facility. So we, we will have a student go in. We've also done other projects um, in optical frequency and we typically do it uh, in-house, so. Okay, thank you. Yep, and then also with, uh, Obviously, with samples that have nonlinear devices or things like that, typically we'll have a, something fabricated, but there's a lot of extra fabrication that we'll do after the fact to wire it up. And so, so. Okay, I guess I'm seeing some questions here. Um, uh, I'll go in order. Uh, how's the work life balance in the lab? Uh, I would say that we are a more balanced than less balanced lab. <laughs> Um, so, so I know some labs get a bit crazy or, or have kind of odd hours. Uh, Professor Sim Piper has kind of the, the view that he wants to see results, not really time. Uh, so the, the important thing with him is that you are interested and you want to find out interesting things and do good work. And if you can do that in a reasonable amount of time in a 40 hour work week, then that's perfect. And that's fine by him. Um, if you are not doing anything at all, then he'll, he'll push you to, to move forward. But uh, in general, I personally think that, that we do a pretty good job. A lot of our projects um, tend to have a year long cycle. So we'll work on something for about a year. And then within a, a, the span of about a year, thereabouts, you'd expect to get a paper out of it. Um, and then Professor Sim Piper's goal is you get three full first author publications as your graduation requirement. That's his internal uh, thing. Um, so if you are motivated and you're passionate, and you're interested, uh, you can usually do that. Um, so the, the balance is usually pretty good. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a really cool guy. He's super nice. Um, so um, can't, can't complain. I, I personally try to work like 40 hours. That's just kind of my thing. So I have evenings and weekends. Um, you know, if there's some sort of deadline or whatever, then that's different. But uh, I'd say we're, we're pretty good. So, but, um, and then I see another one. Uh, how strong of a background in material science? Um, not very at all. Um, so um, it's obviously any kind of background you have in any subfield is cool and interesting. Um, and uh, Sid and Piper will, will help you kind of use those strengths to your advantage, but he doesn't necessarily expect too much in any one particular area. So he's mostly looking for people that, um, you know, having a little bit of electromagnetics is helpful, but honestly, interest in physics and interest in waves, things like that, that's kind of what he cares about. Uh, in terms of the material science side of things, we typically use a lot of really basic materials themselves. So we use basic dielectrics, basic uh, metals, things like that. So we, we don't do necessarily the exotic materials, um, but we do a lot of patterning and a lot of other theory. And these are the kinds of things that we, we don't really expect people to know about before. Um, so things like how periodic structures work um, in a larger scale uh, rather than a micro, you know, nano scale. Um, so typically we, we kind of teach that uh, when you get here. Uh, so if you don't know any of that to begin with, that's totally okay. I, I personally did not have any experience in uh, any kind of material science um, when I started. So, um, but yeah, uh, the, the, the one thing that's obviously helpful is if, you know, you've taken electromagnetics classes before or photonics as well, that's also helpful. So it saves you some, some background time. But. Uh, what EM simulators do we have? Uh, we have, uh, our, our primary one we use is uh, HFSS, ANSOF. Uh, that's kind of our primary uh, solver we use. Uh, we have used CST in the past, but we currently don't have a license for it just because we didn't really have much of a need for it. Um, we also make pretty extensive use of console uh, for a lot, of the, a, lot of, a lot of stuff is 2D, so we do a lot of those. Um, every so often we'll do custom things and use obscure stuff. So I, I myself have, Kind of messed around with some custom codes 
Uh, another lab mate has also written some specialty solvers for bits and pieces, which is little pieces, but um, a lot of HSS, a lot of COMSOL. But uh, again, we don't expect people to necessarily know those. If you do, that's awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, oh, and then we uh, use like AWS, I think, for circuit stuff um, or AWR. I forget, I don't, I don't do circuits, so I, <laughs> I don't remember the acronyms, but one of those two. Um, but yeah, so stuff like that. We have about eight more minutes. So if any of you uh, have any other questions for Robert, feel free to um, unmute yourself and you can show yourself if you would like, or you can type them in the chat, whatever you feel more comfortable with, so. Yep. I also know a decent bit about UCSD too. So if there's any um, totally non-lab specific questions, feel free. Yeah, Robert's also a member of the Graduate Student Council, as you saw in the welcome video. So um, you can ask him about the social life if you'd like, or things to do in San Diego, um, housing. <laughs> yep, you'll, you'll get sick of me by the end of this, however many hours this is, so I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but I see some uh, other questions. Uh, is it helpful to have any experience in IC design? Um, uh, yeah, so, so um, uh, any kind of background like that is definitely helpful for certain projects. Um, so we do certain ones with uh, active de uh, devices, things like that. And we do uh, circuit co-simulations um, with those. So that's kind of a, a very niche area that not a lot of people know. So having background in that, if, if you're interested in that, we have projects that um, you can definitely move quickly for. If you don't have that, again, that's okay. Because uh, again, that's pretty niche. So if you um, are interested in that sort of thing, but you don't have that IC circuit kind of stuff, um, uh, that's not a big deal. But I will say that a lot of our projects, uh, my, uh, Professor Zimpriver really likes fairly straightforward designs. Um, he tries to keep it as simple as possible and focus on the interesting effect. Um, so if uh, it requires a tremendous amount of circuitry to, to make it work, he might be less inclined to kind of pursue it, um, unless it seems like it could be really revolutionary, like really uh, high risk, high reward kind of, um, kind of designs. But um, and then basic EM engineering, um, yeah, that helps. Um, it just helps for the the like I said in the video we do um, experimental work ourselves. We we measure it all. So if you know how you know lab equipment works, if you know how to properly design an SMA connector um, for to work at high frequencies or something, that's helpful. But um, you can usually uh, you know we'll teach each other how to do it. So um, no 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 worries. Um, how hands-on is the professor? I would I would rank him on the side of uh, fairly hands-off. Um, he's there and he's very knowledgeable. He, <laughs> he, he tends to know the answers to everything. Um, and he's always available and lightning quick to response um, to like emails and calls and stuff like that. Um, but in general, he, he does have a more hands-off. He lets you go your own way. Like he'll, he'll often give you something to be like, hey, I think this is interesting based on what you've told me. And we'll we'll have you, uh, you know, give you feedback, and we have weekly lab meetings, things like that. So there's there's feedback on that, but he won't necessarily give you like a to do list of like try the following things and report back. He's more of a, you seem interested in this. I think maybe if you tried something along these lines, um, you can you can kind of pursue it. Um, but he's very he's very open minded to those kinds of things, but definitely more of a hands off kind of professor. So very laid back. Okay. Wait, so do you uh, meet with him like individually every week? Um, not really. We, we recently kind of changed our format, um, but uh, in general, we have like a quick little one-on-one -on -one once every two weeks. Um, okay. So those ones, if, you, if, we have, if I have data report, for example, I might show them. Otherwise, we might just talk about life or careers or things like that, um, whatever other stuff is going on. Um, but yeah, usually it's, and then yeah, we have group meetings that we see everyone um, once a week and somebody presents for. Um, okay. But he's also like, Pretty much any time that if I have to talk to him, I can just call him and say hi. So. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep. Great question. He's also pretty known for responding to your email the same day, which I think is really nice. <laughs> yes. Oftentimes, he, professors take a few days, even a week. Yeah, he's he's lightning quick with those things, and uh, don't be surprised if you get like a response that's like literally in the the title of the email, and there's no body that's just saying something. <laughs> Because he'll just just uh, type in whatever. So, but um, yeah, he's very easygoing. So, so 
Oh, I see one more. I know we're probably almost done, but um, how many people are in your lab? Um, so we, we've just had some people graduate fairly recently. Um, so I think there's ooh, like seven at the moment, two of which are kind of about to graduate. Um, uh, and a postdoc just moved on to his next postdoc. Um, so we typically have more like eight to 10. So we're kind of looking to, to refresh our ranks. Um, and then in terms of training PhDs in our group, uh, typically it's like the slightly higher up but not about to graduate students. So like people like me uh, would be the ones that would kind of uh, train people. Um, uh, it's pretty basic fair, not super <laughs> specific, specialized in terms of uh, what training you need. Uh, especially since each project might be a little specialized. Um, but typically all of us tend to know similar skills, you know, basics. Um, but oftentimes uh, Professor Seven Piper will, um, if, he, if you're working on a similar project, he'll tell that a student who's working on something like that uh, to be like, hey, can you show them uh, your project and teach them how you did it, things like that. So he'll kind of allocate uh, randomly, so, or not randomly, but you know, similar stuff. We might have time for one more question. I'll type my email address. Um, to a certain question get on project. Oh uh, yes, so um, uh, in the last minutes, uh, uh, Professor Tim Piper likes a kind of full full development. So if uh, you'll do the theory, you'll do um, initial simulations, you'll do further simulations, you'll do fabrication, you'll do measurement, and you'll do the whole stack. Um, we do occasionally collaborate oftentimes. So if there's some part that one person is better at, um, two of us will work together on it. But uh, oftentimes in a project is uh, kind of the, the full range. So, so you'll go, you'll take an idea from just a random crazy thought that might work to actually going out and measuring it. Uh, that's, that's kind of his style. And you kind of get a little bit of the experience from each part. Um, so if you're more interested in one part than the other, typically you'll just do a project that has more of that. Um, so I'm more interested in theory and, and math. So I do projects that have a lot of theory and math and not a lot of measurement. <laughs> so it's, you know, depends on the person. But Thank you, Robert, for uh, sharing all of your 